What happened when you were four years old? Um, I was, um, I had a, a virus when I was three and a half years old and um, I was paralysed from the waist down. And at the same time, my grandmother also had uh, stage three lymphoma cancer in the same house. So two people in wheelchairs. And then as time went on, I actually managed to recover naturally, whereas her um, cancer got worse. And um, she got moved from our home to hospital and, and one night through the night, I woke up and she was at the bottom of my bed. And she did my favorite thing, which was tickle my back. Because um, when I was paralyzed, I couldn't feel anything but my back. And um, she tickled my back and I remember just feeling really loved. And the next day I went to look for her and it turned out she'd actually passed away. So you believe she visited you? Yeah, I believe that. To say she, goodbye? Yeah, I feel like she came to kind of make me feel safe and that she was always looking after me. And did that frighten you at four years old? No, because I didn't know she'd passed away. I had thought she'd come home from hospital. No, but when you found out that oh, when she I had found passed out, away? I couldn't understand it. Mm. There was so many questions. Because you hear about, you know, people passing away and you'll never see them again, and that's kind of like a common idea, so I couldn't you... make sense of it. So I was just going to say, but you hit on, on, a, on a vital point, because um, I know Janet has very sceptical views on this as well, but I, am, I believe in angels. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't used to, but my daughter Karen used to say, if we couldn't get parked, she said, we'll ask the parking angel. Mm. And I'd say, don't be so stupid, you know. But we always find a parking space. And so gradually, um, she did some documentaries. And, and so in the end, you know, that isolated white feather that you find, say, in a technical area like this, where there are no feather cushions, but you find that one feather, uh, she always used to say, that's an angel's calling card. Mm. But now, of course, I believe it's Karen's calling card. But the bottom line of it is that I don't care whether Janet is sceptical or not, or if anybody... Yeah. It's a yeah. feeling. You see, I want to believe it. Um, and so, therefore, it's that feeling. You know, it's like your grandmother coming to you was a comfort... Even though you didn't understand it. Yeah. It's the comfort mm. of it. But what do you... How would you describe it? I mean, everybody has their yeah. version, maybe, of what they the think an angel is. To me, it's the one, you know, you see on mm. top of the Christmas tree oh, yeah, with wings Christmas and yeah. dress. Exactly. And... So, an angel can be anything from looking... Um, to a, a lost loved one that's looking out for you, or it can just be the idea of, of a divine being or a higher power that's looking out for you. Do you think everyone has a guardian angel? I really have this strong belief that we all have a guardian angel, whether you want to acknowledge them or not. <laughs> and I think... Uh, it's, it's... But what's the difference between having a guardian angel and believing in a higher power or God? Because all this um, asking an angel to find you a parking space, isn't that just downgrading... Uh, religion, yes, yeah, downgrading the higher power into being some kind of celestial uh, telephone exchange when you can't <laughs> get your way. Like, excuse me, God or whoever, the angel up there can have a parking space. But maybe God's too busy, so we yeah, have to yeah. call in the angels. You use, how do you use... <clears throat> do you, do you, can you use your guardian angel? I don't think do I they, use do, it. Do you ask them, say, look, I've got an interview coming up or I've got a tough day tomorrow. Do you yeah, ask like, I asked my help? angels to text your angels to make sure everything was OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I always just say a prayer for, like, if people are going through a hard time or if I'm going on a flight, I always say thank you for a safe passage. And it's just this idea that I'm being comforted and supported. But why do you need all that comfort and support? Why can't think... you be robust enough to go through life and take what life throws at you? Because if you believe in a higher power, you just accept the upsides and downsides of life. I think that it, is, it isn't that I don't accept the upsides and downsides of life. I think it's more if you're willing to have a personal relationship with a higher power, if you want to call it angel or whatever, it, it just gives you a a sense of you can do this on your own, you can have that being with you. It's not fixing everything. It's about faith in the end, isn't yeah. it? You see, I mean, I know you... I'm going to ask you to pull your T-shirt down. <laughs> <laughs> no, just pull that down. I've got a Jesus tattoo. See, you've got... I mean, uh, when I spoke to Kyle earlier on, I have to tell you, I've examined all his tattoos. <laughs> which are all over his arms and everything, but they all have a religious connotation. Yeah. Not, not necessarily Church of England or anything like Not necessarily Jesus. No. Uh, but I'm wondering if your belief comes from faith or what's it based on? You know, for me, it's just... Um, I think when you have a faith in something, you can be more courageous to make a step in something. And, like, maybe your faith is standing for truth and what you believe in. It doesn't have to be in a higher power. It can just be something that motivates you. No, I believe you. in God. Oh, you do? And, you know, I do believe in oh, God, good. and I've written extensively about believing in God. Uh, but I also think that in the name of religion and in the name of these higher powers, yeah. we are now going through wars all over the world mm. that are, are being fought in the name of religion. True. So 
know, that's, you know. Thanks. And if there are angels, <laughs> I just say, well, how come all these angels aren't stopping these wars that but are But then you could argue then and say, how does God allow yeah. all those wars, you yeah. know? But, but I also think the real angels are the people there that are trying to stop it, you know, the people mm. working their butts off to save um, us. Let me ask you, because I did say to people, you believe you could teach us all to find a guardian angel and that you just practice this for five minutes a day. Yeah, so like what, every day I just say do? a little prayer. I see this one prayer every single day and it's thank you angels for reminding me of your presence. And it's just this opening up to that power and, and the hope it will give you a little wink, as I call it. And how many guardian angels do you have? I think what I've form just got, do they take? I've got one guardian angel and for me I just see it as energy. But I believe that angels can appear to us in a specific way or give us a sign like finding the white feather. Um, Do you believe a white feather is a calling absolutely. card? Absolutely. I think if you find one in a place that you could never put a white feather, it can be a real aha moment that you're not alone. Yeah.